Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you guys are all doing well. This is Waj over here, and in this video, we'll be doing a three-way comparison between probably three of the most talked about and popular smartphones. I'm talking about the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge, the HTC One M9, and the iPhone 6. So in this video, we're gonna determine which one of these smartphones is the fastest and has the most to offer. So if you're interested in that, let's get right into this. Now physically speaking, all three of these smartphones are pretty much on par in terms of build quality and fit and finish. The iPhone and the HTC One M9 are quite similar in terms of their build quality construction since they're completely made out of aluminum alloy versus the S6 is made out of a couple of different materials, Gorilla Glass 4 at the back and front of the phone, and it does have a full aluminum construction that holds everything together. Now in terms of comfort, I think ergonomically the HTC One is probably the best feeling in your hand since it does have that curved back, but of course course that curve back is going to be a compromise when you are using the phone on a table. The S6 on the other hand also feels pretty good. The buttons are very well laid out and extremely easy and tactile to press. The only real downside to me is since it is a glass back it is a fingerprint magnet meaning you're going to have to clean the back all the time if you're not going to use a case. The iPhone on the other hand is a very simplistic design. It also feels very good in your hand because all the corners are nicely rounded off and it is the most compact out of these other two which is nice to see when these days as you have such giant smartphones out there the iPhone is still one of the most compact and powerful smartphones you can get in terms of thickness though the HTC One M9 is quite a bit thicker and heavier than the other two both the iPhone and the Samsung are very similar in terms of weight and overall thickness as you can see now moving on let's talk about probably the most important thing that you're going to find on any smartphone and that's the display now as you can see the iPhone is the smallest display it measures about 4.7 inches the M9 is just in the middle at 5 inches and the S6 is not a lot bigger at only 5.1 inches. And this uh, trend continues on when you take a look at the resolution. The highest resolution is on our Samsung Galaxy S6. It has a whopping 2560 by 1440 display, giving a PPI count of about 577. On the other hand, the M9 has a full HD screen, which gives it a PPI of about 441. And the iPhone is uh, even lower than that at 1334 by 750, resulting in the lowest pixel density count out of these other two smartphones phones of 326. Now resolution is always resolution. In real life, I think all of these screens are quite adequate for their screen size. You don't really see any pixels in any of them. And even though the iPhone is the lowest resolution, I think it's still pretty sharp and pretty clear for pretty much every application you can throw at it. Now that being said, the Samsung Galaxy S6 definitely shows its overall specifications. And you can really see why Samsung is the king of display. And this exemplifies this notion quite well. The colors are very nicely balanced. They're not over vibrant as we've seen in previous Samsung devices. So they have a very nice uh, neutral looking uh, image that definitely still pops. The M9 is a little bit too neutral at times, although its display is quite fantastic as well. And having a resolution of 1920 by 1080 is still fine for its overall screen size. But in terms of the color rendition on the iPhone, I think it does a better job than the HTC One M9. There's a decent amount of saturation and the colors definitely do pop more than what we consider to see on the M9. Now, one of the other big things about the iPhone is its maximum brightness. It probably has one of the most powerful backlight in any smartphone. I got a maximum brightness count of about 606 CDM squared versus the Samsung. I came in second place of 563 and the M9 got about 508 CDM squared. So that means if you use your phones outdoor a lot in the sunlight, the iPhone is going to render out a brighter looking image. Things are going to look a lot brighter than what we see, especially on the M9. The Samsung Galaxy Galaxy S6 isn't far behind, but one of the things that the iPhone also has is the front polarizing layer on top of the glass, which is definitely going to eliminate a lot of the glare and uh, some of the reflections you're going to get from bright light sources. So that's definitely going to help in giving you a very bright and vibrant display, especially when you're viewing it outdoors. Now moving on, let's actually take a look at the speaker qualities on all three of these smartphones. Now, one thing to mention is that the M9 does have front firing speakers, they're stereo speakers, so most likely it's definitely going to deliver the best sound quality but let's go ahead and take a listen to all three of these smartphones that way you have a good idea on what sounds best to you
Mark. Now let's move on and talk about the internal specs on these three smartphones. Now, both the HTC One M9 and the Samsung Galaxy S6 are using octa-core <laughs> CPUs, but they're different architecture. Samsung has custom engineered their octa-core. It's the Exynos 7420 chip, and that's comprised of two quad-core processors, very similar to the Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 chip that we have on the M9. Both of these have uh, three gigabytes of RAM, but uh, different GPUs. We have the uh, Mali uh, GPU in the Exynos processor and the Adreno 430 GPU on the M9. Now the iPhone 6 Plus is uh, completely different in terms of architecture. They're using a custom Apple A8 dual core chip clocked at about 1.4 gigahertz and it's using a Power VR uh, GPU as well as quad core graphics. And we only have one gigabyte of RAM, but I find no problem in terms of the multitasking capabilities on the iPhone compared to the other two. Now let's actually do some benchmarking and some speed tests of these three smartphones to see which one is actually faster in a real day-to-day -day use. So we're just going to do a boot up test. All three of these smartphones are off right now. We're just going to boot them up all at the same time. I have a third hand over here to help me and we'll just see which one boots up the quickest. So as you just saw, the Samsung Galaxy S6 was the fastest in terms of its boot up time. The iPhone wasn't too far behind, but certainly slower than the S6 and the HTC One M9 was quite a bit slower than those other two. It definitely takes a little while to get that thing booted up. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is adjust the Geekbench 3, which is going to test our single core and multi-core capabilities. And uh, basically, we'll just fast forward to the results over here. And you can see that the Samsung is definitely, again, uh, beating the other two by quite a big margin. I got over 5,000 points on the multi-core score and about 1,468 on the single core score. The iPhone 6 isn't too uh, far behind. Uh, certainly in terms of the uh, single core score, it scores the highest out of the other two. That Apple A8 is excellent for single core processing. Uh, but in terms of the multi-core processing, it is the slowest out of the other two at just under 3,000 points. And the M9 is kind of in the middle. It's certainly the slowest in terms of its single core performance uh, that uh, Snapdragon 810 chip isn't as fast as the other two when it comes to single threaded application speeds but in terms of multi-core score it's just under 4,000 points getting around 3,987. And moving right along the next thing that we're going to do is just take a look at the Antutu benchmark. Again this is going to test out our GPU, CPU and RAM and uh, looking at the results over here again very similar theme very impressive 67,000 points on the S6 and and just under 60,000 points on the M9 and uh, certainly the iPhone is uh, a little bit behind those two at uh, getting 45,000 points. And the last and final benchmark that we're going to take a look at is a dedicated graphical benchmark and uh, we're just going to use 3D Mark over here and uh, again fast forward to the results. The iPhone is getting pretty poor score of uh, 17,000 versus uh, 21,000 on the S6 and here the, this is where the M9 seems to shine in the graphical performance. It's seems to be beating the other two, getting over 24,000 score on the 3D Mark benchmark score. So in terms of the gaming performance, looks like it's pretty optimized for gaming. And it looks like the Adreno 430 chip that's in the M9 is going to be great for any of you hardcore Android gamers out there. Now let's talk about some of the special features that each phone has to offer. Now the Samsung and the iPhone both have fingerprint scanners. They're both very similar and uh, both work uh, pretty much in the same fashion. Uh, very quick and uh, fast to respond. You can use them to replace your password, buy certain things. It's a fairly handy security authentication system as well. Furthermore, the GS6 still has that heart rate monitor at the back. Great if you want to measure your heart rate if you do a lot of physical activities with your smartphone. And it also can be used to take uh, selfies of yourself. A pretty handy and convenient feature there. Now when it comes to the HTC One M9, certainly those external speakers are probably some of the best external speakers you're going to find on any smartphone. But it also has micro SD expandability. Unfortunately, we don't have that on the Samsung anymore. So with the M9, you can easily expand your internal memory to whatever you like. Just put in whatever size micro SD card you have lying around and easily expand your memory. X 
excellent if you consume a lot of media versus the Samsung and the iPhone. You're going to basically have to select the specific model when you initially buy the phone to determine how much memory you can have on your phone. Now, in terms of the operating system, both the HTC One M9 and the Samsung are using the latest generation Android 5.0 OS, and they're basically using skins on top of that, but they're both pretty minimalistic. I like the uh, skin that we have on the Samsung, especially it really utilizes the material design of a lollipop quite well. Although I have no major problems with the Sense UI we have on the M9. Obviously the iPhone 6 is using the latest iOS 8 platform. And uh, the cool thing about when you're buying the iPhone is you know that the hardware and software integration is going to be perfectly harmonious. And that's one of the big benefits of uh, buying an iPhone compared to many of the other devices out there because uh, technically the software that's running the uh, platform on both the M9 and the Samsung is run by Google. And then the company uh, selling the smartphone designs and manufactures the hardware to go around the software. The biggest thing that you have on the iPhone side is continuity and simplicity. The user interface is extremely intuitive to use and that's probably one of the reasons why the iPhone is so famous and popular. Again, I can't tell you which uh, interface and operating system is superior. That's for you guys to decide, but basically they're all running the latest generation software and hardware to give you the most out of today's technology. Now moving forward, let's actually talk about the camera specs on all three of these smartphones. Now at the front facing side, the HTC One M9 has a four megapixel ultra sensor. So that's uh, supposedly a little bit larger sensor than a traditional uh, imaging sensor that will give you hopefully better low light performance. Although I haven't found that to be true based on my test, but it does deliver pretty decent looking performance, better than average, and certainly a lot better than what we have on the iPhone 6, which is using just a 1.2 megapixel stills camera and it does 720p video versus the Samsung probably has the best overall front facing camera, five megapixel stills, a really wide field of view, and it can do up to 1440p uh, video capability. So very impressive to see there. On the other side, look in the rear facing cameras, we have the highest resolution stills on the M9 of 20.7 megapixels. The uh, Samsung is uh, right in the middle of 16 megapixels and the iPhone's the lowest at eight megapixels. In terms of low light though, I think the iPhone is still the best it delivers the best overall looking image in terms of giving you the best color rendition and uh, most accurate picture especially in a low light conditions now the samsung is not far behind it does have optical stabilization which is definitely going to help out in both video and uh, the photo modes uh, the m9 is the weakest in terms of its low light capabilities and it has a pretty poor uh, dual led flash as well in terms of video we have a 4k video capabilities on both the htc and the samsung Samsung. We have a 1080p at 60 frames per second maximum capabilities on the iPhone, but it does have the best slow motion capabilities at 240 frames per second. Now, if you guys want to get a better look at the cameras, we actually have dedicated videos on comparing all three of these smartphones together. So we'll have those links in the description down below, or you can just go to the channel and find out yourself. Now, last but not least, we're going to talk about the battery performance on all three of these smartphones. Now, in terms of the uh, battery capacity and specifications, we have the largest battery on the M9 of uh, 2840 milliamp hours, uh, 26 milliamp hours on the uh, Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge. If you get the standard model, it's to about 2550 milliamp hours, so just 50 milliamp hours difference, not a big difference there. The uh, iPhone has the smallest battery capacity of just about 1810 milliamp hours. Now, we did a couple of tests on the batteries to kind of determine what the parameters are. The first thing that I did is do a video loop test. So I basically played a video on a video player app and I basically made sure that the screen brightness was about 40 to 50% on all these smartphones. The Wi-Fi was off and I basically here are the results over here. You can see you can see that the HTC One M9 did the poorest at eight hours, 40 minute mark versus the Samsung did the best at 10 hours, 33 minutes and the iPhone not too far behind at 9 hours 22 minutes. Now to do a more critical analysis of the batteries, we're going to actually use the Geekbench 3 battery drain test and see how each of these smartphones perform. And after a while, here are the results right over here. You can see that our S6 Edge definitely came out on top again, getting a very impressive score of over 7 hours, 18 minutes, 3 hour, 38 minute mark on the M9 and 3 hour, 46 score on the iPhone 6. So in most 
cases, you can see that the Galaxy S6 Edge is certainly the most powerful smartphone, and it does a great job in terms of the battery performance. Uh, in fact, in my every day-to-day -day usage, it also scored the best. I got an average score about 16 hours over a couple of days of using the phone consecutively based on my user habits versus I got about 12 hours on the M9 and uh, just around uh, the 13-hour uh, mark on the iPhone 6. Now, keep in mind that both the S6 Edge and the M9 both have power saving mode so you can get even better battery performance if you have those enabled. But really other than that guys, that's really it. Hopefully this video helped you out in some way and if it did, give us a thumbs up and check out the links in the description for more information about each product. Definitely leave a comment down below letting me know on which smartphone you guys think is the best based on your unique needs and interests. Love to hear all your thoughts and opinion and check out all our channel for all the latest comparison reviews and unboxings. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you later. Take care.